Jim Mullen is the president of Football Canada and the host of Crown Gridiron Nation on TSN. I see the island of the water out behind you. Is that on purpose, Jim? <laughs> you know I'm envious of your no, that, uh, great spot the, out there. That, that's the way That's the way I kind of set up the studio here is that that's uh, Horseshoe Bay behind me just around the corner. And uh, here we are on Bowen Island. The actual motto of Bowen Island is tell your friends it's awful here. <laughs> Basically, we want you to visit and then leave. <laughs> you can you protect that little piece of paradise for yourself. You know, as I said on the phone, we are going to come out there some point this summer, and Rod and I are going to do the show right from your deck. We'll set it up. You just need to make sure we got oh, the yeah, internet that, connection. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, no, that'd that. be fantastic. We, we, got, we got the 800-foot deck up top, eh? so, so we, we, can, we can set you up. Oh, that would be great. You hear that, Rod? I think he's watching where he's got one ear in. All right, that's on the game plan uh, for sometime this summer. And I also wanted to get this, and I saved this for this week. So Nelson, who, our content creator who's watching, I need you to clip this so I can tweet it. But the three things that I love about Canadian football, okay? Pat Griffith Stadium on a Friday night, conversations with all the amazing coaches and football people in this country, and Grey Cup game day, the whole thing from when you wake up until they award the trophy at the end of the day. Those are the three for me. What were yours, Jim? Uh, first of all, it was field dimensions, uh, because uh, when you look at the field dimensions, it gives um, athletes the opportunity to do more uh, uh, on a bigger field, especially these days. I, I think, you know, you're just having a hockey discussion. Uh, you could make the case that a little bit more ice space with the size of the athletes and the development of the athletes could give them uh, more opportunities. Uh, 12 men uh, also gives you uh, the opportunity to watch and see more happening uh, on the field. Uh, I think that that is uh, fairly key. And the other thing is that I think Canadian football, not just the CFL, but right across the board is kind of a mirror of where we've been and where we're going as a country. It's a, it's a great cultural uh, tool and reference, I think, for all of us in Canada. I love that. John, think of your three, and I'll get you guys in the Facebook and YouTube comments or on the Prairie Mobile text line. Send us the three things you love about Canadian football. It's going around social media, so we got tagged in that over the week, and uh, we'll get that out. John, uh, you got any thoughts? Lynch? Well, what I love the most about Canadian football is the wide open and the, 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 the long passes, uh, the wide open field, uh, uh, the running of the game, long runs, and then just wide open and the size of the field. I, I just love it. Yeah, I believe that. That's awesome. So how are things in your world, Jim? Is, it, is this as positive a week as I've been making it out to be all week? Well, I mean, I guess we see things through the through the lens of uh, amateur football uh, over here these yeah. days, and uh, I think there are some challenges uh, across the country. To be transparent with everyone, I mean, New Brunswick is is uh, open for business in terms of football, but you know there are some challenges with the uh, with the pandemic still. Uh, we had to cancel our uh, Canada Cup, our national U eighteen, and cancel a number of. Uh, of um, national competitions for this summer, uh, just because of all the planning that goes into it, we're hoping for interprovincial games in our in our high performance level, and uh, uh, we've got some doubts, uh, quite frankly, because there isn't that time to evaluate athletes as they uh, as they ramp up to put a provincial team together to try to play uh, at the uh, end of July. So instead of BC playing Alberta, we might actually have BC playing Saskatchewan at a, at a high performance level, for example, uh, depending on uh, how the pandemic and vaccinations play out. Uh, but uh, in terms of the uh, in terms of the CFL uh, and in terms of playing in 2021, I, I think there's some positives there. Uh, it may mean that uh, you're looking at Eastern teams uh, playing out West. Uh, I, I secretly wonder if uh, the Toronto Argonauts might be appearing back in your old uh, hometown of uh, Saskatoon. Um, you know, <laughs> That's a good uh, idea. How they facilitate uh, teams in Ontario uh, yeah. playing uh, uh, on the road for so long at the front end of this before they can get back into stadiums in uh, in uh, early September uh, still a lot of questions out there but uh, I was um, I, I was really boosted by Bob Young's statement about getting out there and playing and if they're the only team out there and playing they 
Hamilton Tiger Cats will win the Grey Cup. So. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty easy, even if it's just the O versus the D. You know, and I we saw Mark in Ottawa kind of jump on that too. And I think, you know, more guys that put themselves out there, the better chance we'll play. And to your thought, I th- I, that's what I read in the Montreal Alouette statement, right? When they said they're, not ex- they're kind of expecting to start their home schedule in September, that did they just leak that they're going on the road for a month and that's the plan, right? So that's, that was reading the tea leaves for me. John, you had something. Uh, I, I have to just ask you, Jim. The, the feeling is, from what I've heard from very uh, guys who know what's going on, I think, we're going to do it. We're going to start August 5th. Do you believe that? The regular schedule will start August 5th. The training camp will start the uh, July 1st weekend, which isn't far away. Uh, and these guys that told me that were pretty big guys that know what's going on in football. Well, I sure hope so. Um, you know, I, I'd say <laughs> this is a thing that I've learned through through all of this. It, it, when, when you're trying to predict around this pandemic, it's a 50-50 proposition. Uh, there have been times uh, through this where we've been ready to go uh, on the amateur side with leagues and provinces and uh, competitions in, uh, in the summer where we end the week thinking, OK, we're, we're, we're going to get this thing done. And then there's some piece of information that comes in on the Monday or Tuesday and it's two steps back. So uh, to try to predict the future on some of this stuff um, it's a fool's game, and I would not put any money down on it. But uh, we're just keeping our fingers crossed over here. I, I think one of the encouraging signs, though, is uh, at the U Sports level and at the conference level, seeing that Canada West is uh, committed uh, to a six-game season, knowing that U Sports is uh, directing their efforts towards a Vanier Cup on December the 4th, which is a lot later than usual, uh, knowing that the uh, conferences are online to uh, activate something in terms of uh, high performance play at the university level. And I know the CJFL is also focused uh, at getting back on the field. There's an effort there. We are going to see football at some point. I just can't tell you when. But don't you think Canadian wise, Canada wise, it's a must we play this year? We can't have another year where you. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I yeah agree. Absolutely, John. Uh, I, we we need to get back on the field with our game. Uh, yeah. We need to we need to uh, show Canadians and re-engage with. Us. Now, we we know the football comes in all kinds of different forms. We got six men, we got nine men, and flag is going to be more important as we move forward into the future. Uh, but you know the thing that gets me right here it's it, it's the 12 man game it's the 110 it's the 20 yard end zones it's the 65 yard wide and when it's played at, at its highest and most competitive level I, I don't think there's a, another sport out there that outdoes it in terms of uh, the concept of teamwork and what it presents entertainment wise do you think there's any place for the, the, the rock and his group from the states uh, I don't want to see it but a lot of people do want to think that that could really save the league coming in next year because they're not going to start till next year. I, I don't want to see it. How do you feel about it? Well, I, Mike Mitchell, uh, who's a, a great writer out of the States that covers the XFL, has uh, basically rolled out a story uh, yesterday that uh, said that the XFL won't be going next year. So if there is any sort of engagement uh, moving forward, it, it would probably be a 2023 uh, option for the XFL. So we've got at least two seasons of, uh, of Canadian football in front of us. Um, you know, I, I had a discussion with uh, Randy Ambrosi about 12 days ago. And, you know, the, the, the picture that I got from Randy is that, you know, the CFL is interested in engaging in change. Uh, how that change looks still at this point is anybody's guess. Uh, but, you know, for, for us on the amateur football side, what we need to look at is not having that discussion about rules. Because what we need to focus on coming out of the pandemic is getting players back on the field, focusing on athletes, focusing on coaches, focusing on officials, so we can get this game restarted again. That that you know, the XFL and the CFL, they are going to do what they are going to do. Uh, 
I think that's uh, <laughs> the way I ended up my <laughs> conversation <laughs> with Randy 12 days ago. But uh, at the end of the day, our focus is just getting back to football. Uh, yeah. I, I'm concerned about Randy in some ways, uh, Jim. I don't know if he's – he's a good guy. I like him, but – I think this has been a very time-consuming, draining experience for him. Do you not think so? I think it's a time-consuming and draining experience for everyone right now as uh, as we go through COVID. Um, uh, it's, it's certainly been that way for us over at Football Canada. You want to talk about cancel culture, I think we've canceled uh, <laughs> uh, 32 events over the last Jeez. year and a half, it's been, it's been frustrating. I uh, bet. You know, I don't envy the position uh, that he's in, uh, quite frankly. And uh, I don't envy the position the teams are in uh, because everything's so uneven uh, across the country. What can work in one province doesn't necessarily work in another province. Um, you know, I think the good thing that's come out of COVID uh, through all of this is the opportunity uh, for everybody's operations to revisit how they operate. And, and and it's allowed everyone to take a step back, re-examine relationships, uh, and, and re-examine what your business model is uh, moving forward. I think we've made some uh, good headway at, uh, at Football Canada in terms of repositioning ourselves as soon as we come out of the pandemic. Uh, I, I hope that what the CFL and the Board of Governors uh, come to in terms of a conclusion is um, something that is in alignment with, with what we do, uh, quite frankly. Right now, it kind of feels like we're on different trajectories between uh, what amateur football does and what professional football does. When we get out on the other end of this, I hope there's a lot of teamwork there. Yeah, I agree. I think that's the biggest thing at the end of the day, right? Working together. So we got to go, but what, what's next for you on your calendar, the Football Canada calendar, the next uh, coming weeks? Portis Trophy, Monday. We're rolling it out on uh, holiday Monday. Uh, we've got uh, six very uh, uh, overcapable players, for, uh, Canadians in the NCAA that have been evaluated by 20 voters uh, from across the country. Um, not to discount four of them, but I really think this comes down to a battle between John Mechie the uh, third. He's playing in Alabama. He's out of Brampton, Ontario. Uh, had um, uh, 916 yards receiving, uh, 55 receptions. 35 of those were for touchdowns uh, or uh, or first downs. Uh, he was a big impact player. Moved up to number two. Uh, in terms of receiving uh, on the national champion. And Eamon Ogbong Bamiga, uh, the senior uh, linebacker uh, that uh, signed with the San Diego Chargers, um, he, he's a guy that I'd love to see in the Canadian game. Um, se uh, second team Big 12 and uh, MVP honorable mention on the defensive side in that conference. I think that's where the battle is uh, for the Cornish Trophy on Monday. Awesome. We're looking forward to it. We'll be following closely, Jim. Enjoy the weather. We're getting snow this weekend, Saskatchewan. So. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. Yeah, take care, guys. Always a pleasure Bless being you. on here. Uh, say Thanks, hi Jim. to Roddy for me. We will. Jim Mullins, the president of Football Canada and the host of Crown Gridiron Nation on TSN. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.